At the base of the Cyan Mountains in northern Mongolia, the hunters have managed to trap the reindeer at the bottom of a valley. Some 3,000 years ago, the Samoya tribes domesticated the wild reindeer in these mountains. Today, their descendants, the Tsatan, still capture wild reindeer. The deep snow helps the hunters. It slows down the flight of the animals. The prey escapes, leaving the men empty-handed after days of a grueling hunt. Moving to another valley, the hunters will start to track the deer again. The Tsatan are the centaurs of the snow traveling on the backs of reindeer in a maze of mountains and valleys in northern Mongolia. The deer are part of their lives. They identify with an animal which is both gentle and yet part untamed, and often attempts to return to the wild. Without reindeer, the Tsetan couldn't live in this remote landscape, which is not easily accessible by other means. For Tsatan herders, it is thus crucial to capture wild animals to introduce new blood into their herds, and also to replace animals that have fled. The Tsatan learn to use lassos almost as soon as they walk. Kizilal has an excellent aim. The boys take turns breaking in the young reindeer calves. <laughs> Kizilol is amused. He's seen all this before. <laughs> Kizilol is 18. His friend, Salongo, is 17. Kizzy Lal and Salongo are thinking of starting a family. For Tsetan adolescents, life is filled with both the routine and the unexpected. At daybreak, they take the reindeer out to pasture in the mountains. This is an opportunity to pass some time together while the reindeer graze. The deer are herded together, but each family separates their own animals from the herd 
once they return from pasture. Ganzorg, Quizilal's father, is a highly respected man. To feed a family, one needs a good herd, Ganzorg explains. He plans to give his son a young reindeer bull to start his own stud. But be vigilant. The clan will soon be moving close to the Russian border, where the wild reindeer still roam. If the animals break loose and run off to join the wild reindeer, they will be lost. The Tsatan rely on fishing and hunting to gain a meager existence. The lakes in the taiga are shallow, and the ice is as transparent as glass. Ganzorig can easily spot the fish sleeping between the rocks. In early November, the ice on the lakes has already become 12 to 16 inches thick. The men first start by chopping holes in the ice. Then they dangle shiny lures into the water attached to the end of a nylon line. Trout and grayling are plentiful in the mountain lakes. Ganzorg is the tribe's best fisherman. Quizilal will not go home empty-handed. Meals provide a rare moment to discuss intimate matters. Quizilal admits that he is courting the lovely Salongo. Dak Chak and his wife can't refuse a favor for an old friend like Gan Zorig. The request for marriage must be made according to Tsatan custom. The envoys from the suitor's side must bear gifts. 
Cheese, alcohol, reindeer milk, fried dough biscuits. Dak Chak and his wife put on their best clothes. And in keeping with tradition, they ride white reindeer. As he praises the suitor, Dak Chak unfolds a blue silk scarf, symbolizing the purity and infinity of the sky. Salongo's father pretends to turn a deaf ear. It will take more than this to discourage Dak Chak. Dak Chak has returned, bearing a negative reply. Quizilal's plans are now frustrated. Autumn is almost over, and it's time to leave for new pastures. The clans will now travel far north, closer to the border with Russia. Kizilal keeps his distance from the rest of the group, left alone to nurse his wounded pride. Salongo's father has doubted him how to convince him that he'll make a good husband. The reindeer are taken the long way around the mountain while the rest of the clan takes the direct route over the steep and dangerous slope. The passes belong to a violent and capricious genie feared by the Tzatan. The wind is picking up. It's blowing hard at the top. Everyone who wants to cross the pass must leave an offering to the Ovo, a pile of stones set up to house the mountain genie. Both man and animal have to walk around it as a sign of homage.
It's better to move quickly away from the realm of the mountain demons. They don't like the scent of humans and raise up an icy wind that chills people and animals to the bone. Dak Chak, who is trailing behind, finally joins up with the rest of the clan. With everyone together again, they can now start down into the valley. Meanwhile, the herds have made wide detours, traveling from one lake to another. The camp is ready when the deer arrive. Quizilal and Salongo help round up the animals. The reindeer have to be tied up in pairs at night. If not, they will run off to join the wild reindeer. The Tsatan are masters of ropes and knots. They don't use nails or screws. Everything is tied and held together with ropes. The throat song lullaby was created in this region of Asia to echo the voice of nature. It's the wind in the trees, running water, the call of rutting deer. The Tsatan sing to meditate and to rock their infants into sleep. Some animals have snapped their tethers during the migration. They have escaped to the far side of the lake. <laughs> Night has fallen. It's too late to search for the runaways. In the winter, it gets dark around 4 p.m. The tribe has a TV, and everyone gathers together in the afternoon to watch a movie. The satellite dish was made from recycled pieces of sheet metal. A solar panel recharges a car battery. The state channel is broadcasting the story of Sur Batar, the legendary Mongolian revolutionary hero. Scouts have gone out to find the tracks of the runaway deer. When they return, the men will organize an expedition to capture them. Quizilal and Salongo take advantage of the break to gather medicinal plants for themselves and the animals. This also gives them some time alone, away from the adults. The 
Tsatsa know about modern medicine, but they still use traditional healing methods, which are far less expensive. Quizzy Lal's grandmother is delighted with the plants. The old woman knows the traditional medicinal plants by heart. She hopes the tribe's youngsters will carry on her knowledge, which could otherwise be lost. The scouts have returned. They found the tracks of the reindeer and know which direction they have gone. Before leaving, Ganzorg and Quizilol soften their moose leather lassos. The hunt will be difficult. Quizilol drinks a last bowl of tea fortified with reindeer milk. Three days, one week. No one knows how long the expedition will take. The runaway deer have headed into the Aggie Mountains, towards the Russian border. This is what Gan Zorg feared all along, but he can't give up. Winter has arrived, and the Tsata need all their animals for the calving season in spring. Capturing the runaways is crucial to the life of the herd. Cutting across the frozen river means the hunters can catch up to the reindeer. The ice becomes extremely slippery where it's scoured by the wind. Even the reindeer have trouble keeping their balance. Before crossing the river, the hunters spread sand so that the reindeer won't slip and possibly break a leg. The hunters set up camp at dusk. They only carry minimal provisions so they can travel light on this terrain. They'll spend the night on a bed of pine branches. The fire has burned all night long. After the morning tea, Quizilal makes a traditional pipe. He 
he uses a stick to dig out pith from branch softened in boiling water. The hunt continues. It's exhausting. The hunters leave the river and climb towards the hills, cutting through the mountains. The border is just a few miles away. The mountains to the north are in Russia. Border guards patrol on the other side of the lake. The lake region is a huge dead end at the base of the Aggie Mountains. They now have to get close enough to lasso the runaways. Most of the reindeer have been captured, but the bull Ganzora gave to Quizilol escaped again. Yadam fashioned skis from a birch tree. 
which is the easiest wood to work. It takes a day to make a pair of rudimentary skis. The wood is first heated, then worked over steam, heated again, and so on. The skis are tied to curve the tips. They'll stay for an entire night. The cold helps hold the shape. Horse hide is then attached to the base of the skis. The hair holds the snow and keeps the skis from sliding backwards when climbing a hill. The bindings are a bit loose, but Quizilal is happy with the results. Quizilal will take two reindeer to capture the bull. One he will ride. The other will carry his gear. To attract the runaway bull, he chooses two cows who are about to come into heat. He delights them with a handful of salt before the journey. Zorig invokes the ancestral spirits. They will protect his son and guide him in this remote and dangerous region haunted by spirits and the Badakshan. Gan Zorig's whistling sounds imitate the wind because the spirits of the ancestors travel on gusts of wind. The first ancestor spirit arrives, speaking through Gan Zorig's quavering voice. I have made a long trip. I am tired. I want to smoke a pipe. Give me something to smoke. Another spirit arrives. The road is tiring. I'm thirsty. Something to drink. Uh, 
Quizilal's ancestor spirits are now gathered around him. You will do as we say. Approach the sacred peaks from the right and wear your weapons on your left. Follow our advice and you will be safe. You are under our protection now. The spirits fly back to their dark heavens, riding on the wind. Satan shamans directly enter trances. They do not need any psychotropic substances to trigger hallucinations and deliriums. They burn juniper in an incense burner. It delights the smell-eating spirits and purifies humans. It also protects animals. It confers magical powers to the lasso. Quizilal and the rest of the hunters part ways. The hunters return to the camp. Quizilal crosses the lake in search of the runaway bull. Tracks are hard to follow in places where the snow has melted. Thank you. 
に入らない。いつもだから。The hunter and his daughter lead Quizilal to the spot where they last saw the bull. In the winter, the frozen streams and lakes are natural paths for these large animals. Has chosen to take a long detour along the lakes rather than climb the pass. Kizilal doesn't have that option. He has to climb over the mountain to catch up with him. The ascent is exhausting. Kizilal encourages himself. Zorg was right to make skis. Quizilal still has a lot to learn. He doesn't go any faster. But at least the skis keep him from sinking in the powder snow. The Aggie Mountains, the land of the legendary Badak Chan. Quizilal is worried. If the Badak Chan demons spin the antlers of his bull around, what will he do? There he is. The antlers are magnificent. The Badak Chan have left him alone. The bull is wary. Will the squirrel hunter's ruse work? Catching the scent of the females, the bull draws closer.
First try. A perfect toss. He's a strong male. He's not going to give in easily. Herders are sometimes injured as they struggle with a bull. The bull makes one last stand. Finally, the bull gives up. He is back with his master. The ancestral spirits protected Quizilal from the evil spirits. They guided him through the mountains. The young man is now a true Tzatan. It was a boy who left to capture the reindeer. But a man who now returns to camp. And Zorig can't believe his eyes. The bull is back. The entire clan greets Quizilal as a hero. Everyone gathers to listen to the story. It is a superb bull. Quizzy Lal's dreams of building a new herd may soon be realized. But will he also succeed in capturing the hand of the lovely Salongo?